uh, beating, beating people over the head, and this is just making me feel so at home. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, do you any of you want to talk about a little bit about your roles and and because uh, uh, we know that your role is, I guess, similar to the appointed one. You're you're, you're the villain in this as well. Uh, so I'm not sure if you want to kind of expand upon that. Or... I'd say I'm more like um, I'm a good guy from a certain point of view. Okay. I wouldn't say I wouldn't. Well, I, all villains. I wouldn't. Your, uh, yeah, absolutely. I wouldn't say I'm um, your traditional villain. I'm I'm more kind of a, in, in essence, almost I'm a puppet master. And some, some, or the way I like to put it, what we were, when I looked at the script, is almost like um, Frank Underwood, mm -hmm. you know, from yeah. from House of Cards. He's you know, not necessarily. He doesn't do good things, but you sort of root for him at the same time. Yeah, I'm not exactly a nice guy, but I don't, you know, you don't necessarily want to see me dead either. You know, okay. and that's kind of the way I, I that's the thought way. of it. <laughs> that's the way I kind of approached it, and that's the way I kind of thought of it as I, as I was developing the character. So, and Furge, uh, can we bring up the soda thing? Oh, no, yeah. Let's bring up the yeah, soda thing. Yeah, what's going on there? People need business. So, we, <laughs> so had, uh, we had a thought, like, early on, because we Andrew was like, as an actor, he's like, I, you know, I need something to do. Like, I don't want to just, like, walk in, you know, and stare at her creepily because they're going to get a very wrong sense of what this project is actually. And so we were, like, toying with, like, oh, like, what's something that, like, he can have, like, as a signature thing? And we kind of jumped back to the Ocean's Eleven kind of thing, where uh, I don't know if anybody noticed, but uh, Brad Pitt's character is always eating something. Every single shot, every single. If you he's ever watch him, you watch him, and you'll see. And he's like, he's got a taco, he's got a burrito, he's got a hamburger. He's, he's got, got like some tray like, kind of hungry. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so we were like, it would be funny if he always had like some can of soda in there. And it, it, I don't know. We like threw it on there, and we tried it out, and we were like, yeah, this is great. It's like the perfect kind of just thing we threw in there. And ever since then, we just kind of rolled with it. And Kate's kind of, you know, he's, he's obnoxious. He's yeah. a little bit obnoxious. He's a little obnoxious. <laughs> you know, he's, he's a demon in a human's body, and he kind of, you know, he, he um, best way to put it, he's just, he's full of himself. He's, he's full. super full of himself. And so it makes perfect sense. He's just drinking this, he's slurping the soda, and he's tossing it around, <laughs> and he's doing a dick. Oh, and man, that's just pretty much, <laughs> there's this one time where, again, you know, Andrew, lovely Andrew, trying to help us keep time. We were uh, sitting doing a deleted scene, which you'll actually see in a little bit. But um, and we, you know, kind of toward the end of the day, we're kind of trying to get everything done. And so one of the takes, he sits there and first opening shot, and just forever. I was waiting till someone stopped. The whole the whole crew just erupted in laughter. It was just you, like, you need to keep it light sometimes. And of course, Zach being our you know lovely person over there was just like, cool, thanks for being an asshole. We appreciate it. <laughs> Burning up all our film. Burning up our yeah. film time, it's fine. <laughs> Um, well, Christina, you want to talk about your uh, yeah. role? Yeah, um, Kira is the strong loner type. So her parents died when she was very young uh, in a fire. We don't know what caused it, but you'll find out later. Um, and this specific demon who preys on like strong loner types on strength uh, starts to haunt her and starts to take over her. And Kate over here knows that. And so he appears in my life as this good guy. And he says, if you do these missions for me, if you slay these demons, which are so hard to do alone, I'll help you out. And so I do it for a while, and as time goes on, our relationship kind of builds, but it's very like a love-hate relationship. Because he's k kind of helping me, but it's not really. And it kind of, and, and the soda definitely helps. When he like comes to the soda and he's like, Hey, I need you to do this and like kill these five demons. <laughs> I'm like, really, asshole? Really? <laughs> um, but yeah, it's it's very. She she does want a normal life as any young girl would. She wants to have a connection to people. But Kate is pretty much the only person in her life, um, and he's kind of in my life. He's my neighbor who looks out for me a little bit. Um, doesn't really know what I'm about. But other than that, I don't really have much friends. He has a hot sport. Yeah. I think Basically. he's just kind of nosy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, but he, yeah, do you want to talk about your character? Uh, my character, again, is kind of like the comic relief. Yeah. So he's a funny guy. He provides that little comical aspect to every darkness you need. And her character, my character, she's kind of looking at me as like a life that she can't have. Yeah. Because she's tormented by this guy That's right dear. here. 
you know. <laughs> so, so I provide that, that life that possibly she could have one day that she's looking forward to, but not ready for. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He won't let her out either, so. <laughs> yeah. And, and uh, we kind of started with.